uh, hi everyone welcome to autoverse academy we are uh, automotive training service providers and today in this video uh, we will be trying to understand uh, what is autoverse certified professional and how can you become one and uh, what are the various topics we will be covered under uh, this particular program right um, see um, the reason we have this curated program is today we understand there is a, a tremendous demand in terms of automotive software professionals who have a knowledge of uh, uh, topics like can uh, autosar lin flexray ethernet so these are the basics topics anyone who is working in the automotive industry should be aware of right and we are trying to have all of these topics combined uh, as a one package course and anybody who takes up these programs and clears uh, 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 this program they will be called as a autover certified professionals right so the program does not only concentrate on um, delivering the training or completing the training the key focus would be to ensure that a proper knowledge transfer is done and uh, all the trainees clear the evaluation test and once they do that we actually call them autover certified professionals and the key usp of this program is it's not going to be a, a complete theoretical session the focus would be given on hands on where we will have a 40% of a theoretical coverage and a 60% of a hands on training right so this hands on would give an exposure to a real time work environment real real time industry exercises where individual get a confidence how to handle a, a particular tool options or how do they build a particular product out of using this technology concept and tools yeah uh, and also this program is only limited to 30 members so that uh, a participant gets the full attention uh during this entire training uh so that they can clarify their doubt and uh, they can be very confident once they complete the training okay so we'll we'll go to the course outline and uh, try to see how the course outline looks like <clears throat> or the course schedule looks like okay then coming to the uh, the program schedule itself the program scheduled is designed in a such a way that it will not disturb a working professional with their work so they can anybody who is a working professional who can take this training alongside their work so majority of the training would happen on weekend and there will also be a sessions a short session of 2 hours or a 4 hours on the weekdays so that we have a continuous engagement and the people who kind of learn on the weekend go back and try some exercises or they want to revise right they can always come back on this weekday 2 hours or 4 hour session where we can discuss and clarify their doubt and also cover some of the topics on the weekdays as well okay then coming to the uh, the program schedule itself the program schedule is designed in a such a way that it will not disturb a working professional with their work so they can anybody who is a working professional who can take this training alongside their work so majority of the training would happen on weekend and there will also be a sessions a short session of 2 hours or a 4 hours on the weekdays so that we have a continuous engagement and the people who kind of learn on the weekend go back and try some exercises or they want to revise right they can always come back on this weekday 2 hours or 4 hour session where we can discuss and clarify their doubt and also cover some of the topics on the weekdays as well okay so if you look at this schedule the first module what we are targeting here is the can tp can fd and the can protocol itself right so we are going to spend four days on this topic starting from 23rd april and will end by 28th of april right so we'll be spending two six hours of sessions on the weekend and two hours of two sessions on the weekdays okay so the next module we will have is a lin flex ray automotive ethernet okay uh, maybe before we, we we go to that one maybe i'll quickly show you what is the content of can can tp and can fd so you are familiar with those details so coming back to uh, sorry 
okay coming to the detailed course outline so here you can see what all the content will be covering in can can tp and can fd okay so coming to the can so we are going to start with very basics where we'll try to understand what is the standard how it is implemented what is the node architecture what is the bus connection what are the different voltage levels corresponding to different bit levels and what is the basic principle on which can protocol is built like csma cd and ndba are the two basic principles and what is the benefit of using this particular network and when we compare this network with other protocols or the other networks how does it stands what are the similarities what are the differences right and we'll also try to understand what is a, a, a protocol converter or a bus separator or a gateway and what its role when we talk about a hybrid network or a in vehicle networking <clears throat> we'll then go to the can trans receiver can controller and can bus part which is the three predominant parts of the can protocol when we'll try to understand how does they interact with each other what is the uh, uh, physical line between a can controller and a can trans receiver and how does the can bus looks like what are the different logic level what is the communication principle right what kind of coding format is used here right why do we need a termination resistance what is this twisted pair of wires how they are helping to reduce the noise so all of this information would be discussed in the second topic this is the third one we'll try to understand the characteristics of a can protocol which also includes the frame format <coughs> of both standard and extended and we'll try to understand the bus arbitration the addressing mechanism right different types of frames what we have in the can the the data frame remote frame right the error frame overload frame and what is the importance of this bit stuffing crc acknowledgement right and how does the error detection happens in the can protocol how do we treat and come out of a so called bus off state right so all of this would be discussed in the characteristics of a can protocol then we come to the can fd where more major focus is to understand how does this can fd uh, trying to compete with all the other protocols because can fd is something which has come after can it is an extension of can protocol so here we are mainly talking about the flexible data rate right so we can go up to maximum of 10 mbps and how that can be achieved right and how we can send more than 8 bytes of data without doing a multi frame concept so all of this would be discussed inside a can ft protocol <clears throat> coming to the can tp so in the can tp the idea is to use the can protocol and send more than eight bytes of a data where we discuss about a single frame first frame flow control frame and consecutive frame so using all these four frames how can we transmit a four kilobytes of data right using this eight bytes repeatedly and also we'll try to understand what is block size what is estimate timing parameter right so and we'll also try to achieve this by doing a hands-on session where we write a code either on a c program or on a capital and they, we try to create a two nodes and exchange the information right so in that way the can can ft and the can tp we can try to understand code it execute it and get a feel of how the communication happens okay so that's about the can protocol course outline <laughs> okay now coming back to the second topic what is mentioned here which we will be covering on day five and day six now the second topic uh, is mainly for uh, advanced communication protocol uh, which is more like a lin flex and automotive ethernet right so here we will be spending two days uh, six hours each on saturday and sunday and we'll try to cover these protocols in detail and uh, we'll try to understand uh, how does these three protocols kind of play a role uh, uh where the shortcomings of can are coming right so when we look at the lin it is a very low cost protocol and uh, yeah it it is something which can be configured very quickly because we have a master which is having a uh, uh the stack whereas the lin does not have any stack in uh, uh, or the software right it is just a single register which needs to be configured we'll also understand the flex ray how it can act like a backbone network and also can satisfy the real time requirement and uh, it can also give you a, a dual channel which is kind of a unique compared to any other protocol right and then we'll try to understand the automotive ethernet which is something which is trending today and a lot of people are adopting it due to the the, the robustness the reliability and the speed uh, what uh, automotive ethernet can offer right so let us go into the course uh, detail 
and try to understand what are the various topics we will be covering in each. Okay, um, so this is the flex ray topic. So in the overview, we'll try to understand what is electronification of motor vehicles and how the motivation for flex ray has come into that, right? We'll try to understand what is this flex ray consortium and how does the specification looks like and what are the details mentioned in that. And we'll also try to compare the CAN protocol with flex ray and we'll try to see what are the additional benefits flex ray is bringing in. <clears throat> We'll try to understand the important uh, topics which are like a brake by wire or the steer by wire. How the flex ray is promising this brake by wire or a steer by wire with a high reliability and also with the speed which can go up to 10 Mbps to 20 Mbps and also with the redundant line, right? With the 10 Mbps, we can have a redundant line. And we'll also try to understand the safety and the fault tolerance, what flex ray as a protocol is bringing in, right? And then we'll go into the flex ray communication protocol itself. We'll try to understand how does the node controller and how does the flex ray bus looks like? What is the physical medium or the channel on which it works? And what are the different voltage levels it follows, right? And what are the bus interface which is used? And what is this bus guardian, right? Which is something new what we have in the flex ray compared to the CAN. What its role? So we'll be looking into all those aspects then we'll come to the flex rate bus access <clears throat> the way we have a csma cd in the can similarly we have a, a hybrid combo here where uh, we have a static slot and a static segment which is more like a can protocol and also we have a dyna which is more like a tdma sorry and we also have the dynamic segment which is more like a can right where any node can kind of arbitrate and win the slot and they can transmit so we'll try to study this in comparison of a can and see what advantages it can bring in then we'll come to the framing the header payload and the coding part we'll do a detailed analysis and understanding of this different bits and bytes inside the flex ray frame We'll go to the synchronization, very important topic, right? How does the synchronization is achieved inside the flex ray protocol, right? What is the basic principle of synchronization which is used in the flex ray, right? And then probably we'll go into the Kano and Canalyzer tool using the flex ray database, understanding how do we load it, how do we write a capital script using which we can interact with the flex ray frames and we can send a different information over the Kano using the IG block. And we'll also write a capital script where we can do a start stop and create a simple GUI and uh, send and receive some frames. And how do we access the static part of a, uh, a flex ray? And how do we access the dynamic part of the flex ray? So that would be our focus when we come to the capital part for the flex ray. All right. And also one more important uh, topic, which uh, I think I kind of missed to explain is the after completing the every module, right? We will have a, 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 a test or the evaluations, which uh, uh, is something which is compulsory for each participant to take up. And also there would be hands-on assignments where they can work on it and uh, which will be evaluated. So at the end of each module, uh, uh, we will evaluate and we'll try to understand where the participant stands. And if we see that there is any gap in terms of knowledge acquisition, we'll try to address that with an additional effort. Uh, coming to lin protocol which is a local interconnect so here the focus is to understand why do we need uh, this basic serial bus system all right uh, when we have already flex ray or can in place what is the advantage or the low cost low cost part or the quick configuration which is bringing in 
the fundamentals of the lin protocols which talks about the synchronizations or the secure data transmission the frame slot the scheduling part or the network and the status management we will go through that <clears throat> we'll try to understand what is this ldf file link description file which is equivalent to can db in can protocol or the 5x file in the flex rate protocol we'll try to understand how the lin network configuration works right what is this node capability file and how does it work right we'll try to understand the lin hardware itself the hardware interface when i mean how does the uart or the lin uart or the lin controller and the lin can, can uh, lin trans receiver right how they interact and again we'll come back to the cano or the canalizer for the lin and we'll try to repeat the same exercises what we did for can or the flex ray right uh, how do we send receive the frames right how do we use the ig block how do we use the graphical user interface how do we use the capital programming to access right we will do the measurement and analysis and the simulation and demolition both of it and uh, try to create some exercises and the assignments which you guys can perform over it and there are extended functionalities inside the kano tool itself where we talk about uh, the cluster simulation the diagnostics uh, messages is right uh, and how can we schedule uh, uh, unconditional uh, messages right how do we uh, do this lint uh, stress test the feature set test right so all of this would be covered in the last sessions right which are slightly advanced topic Next, we will look into automotive Ethernet. Yeah, so automotive Ethernet, we'll try to understand. First thing is, why do we need automotive Ethernet, right? So we already studied kind of a three protocol, CAN, LIN, and FlexRay. So now what is the need for this automotive Ethernet, right? So it is bringing this enormous high bandwidth. It can go up to one uh, Gbps, right? Which is the biggest advantage. And also this is a protocol which has been there for some time and it has proven its ability of robustness, right? Or the reliability part. So that is where the automotive industry is first time going out and trying to adapt a protocol which is already being proven its efficiency reliability right and the robustness so here we'll try to basically understand how this automotive ethernet is different from a traditional ethernet and what is the motivation or the necessity of this automotive ethernet in the automotive industry and what are its different use cases right and then we'll get into the physical layer we will try to understand what are the different topologies of the network art architectures used and what are the different uh, uh, t bases we have 100 base t1 100 base tx and 1000 base t which is our uh, gbps one gbps network right and then we'll get into the Mac, VLAN, and the Internet Protocol, which is the IPv4 and the IPv6. And there are various, say, the once we have the physical layer covered, then comes uh, uh, our intermediate layers, where which can be either IPv4, IPv6, or uh, AVB. So it keeps changing based on what purpose or the use case we are going to cover. So in this use case, we are going to cover the Mac and the VLAN, which is uh, built, uh, which is used with the IPv4 or the IPv6, right? so we will study both the version 4 and the version 6 uh, and we'll also try to understand what is the routing right what is the subnet mask uh, what is the arp and dhcp how does it work right and uh, the complete the ethernet frame bus access methods right addressing of the ip packet so all this would be studied we we'll get into the switches and uh, vlans uh, how these are defined and what are its operations right what are the different modes in which switch can operate and how they are the switches are interconnected right 
and then we'll get into the tcp up a tcp ip and udp uh, 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 protocol right which are the two predominant protocols which are always used most of the time used against the the ip itself or the ip uh, sorry i meant the ethernet protocol itself right and how they are structured uh, right in the tcp and the udp packets how they are structured and uh, how does this connection oriented and connection less communication happens using this tcp and udp we'll also try to understand some of the other protocols which can sit on top of the ethernet uh, protocol ethernet physical layer right so we have some ip which is a service oriented communication right so this is something which is becoming very popular and this is also something which is already supported inside the autosar protocol so we we study about the serialization right the service discovery remote procedure call how do we do this publish and subscribe right and the segmentation of the different udp messages right so uh, we'll go over very quickly on the some ip part and we'll glance on the avb part which is the your audio video bridging right which is a one of the time synchronized data transmission right which is has got a lot of popularity uh, once the automotive ethernet has kind of entered into the uh, automotive so avb is widely used when the audio and the video transmission comes right for the electric vehicle we are going to use iso 1511 bit which talks about the smart charging solutions for the vehicle we are also going to talk about the xcp so we had the, like a ccp uh, when you perform it on the can protocol or you can you can have a uh, flex ray based communication protocol right so similarly you have this xcp which is a universal measurement in the calibration protocol which is running on top of your ethernet we also try to understand how a diagnostic can be performed over a ip which is called as a dwipe famously right and then we'll try to get an understanding of autosar automotive ethernet right how the entire topic what we discussed right the ethernet ethernet trans receiver the switch driver the interface how they are placed in a uh, autosar stack right we'll try to understand that including even the tcp ip and the socket adapter right and then the next layers of protocol what we discussed service recovery some ip right udp network management so doip xcp so how how they are kind of placed inside the autosar we also have the v2g and the avb uh, modules we will try to go over that then again we'll come back to the kano tool and we'll try to do the configuration setup simulation right measurement and we'll also do the graphical user interface and the capable programming which would be our hands on part uh, where we write a capital program to control, receive, send different Ethernet messages. Okay, so let's come back to the original schedule. Yeah, so once we cover the um the three protocols lin flexway and the automotive ethernet i think once we go through the can protocol it would be fairly easy for you to follow up what is lin flex and automotive ethernet all the basics which are required for uh to cover this advanced protocol would be covered in the can protocol which means which in turn means the can is the prerequisite for lin flex and automotive ethernet right <clears throat> so totally we will be spending 12 hours on these topics then we'll come to the next topic which is mostly the next layer of uh, uh, the stack which is the diagnostics which is the uds right here the focus is to uh, uh, so first let us look at the schedule so sh we will be starting it on 5th of uh, april so we will have a uh, two weekends where we will do a full day sessions and then we will have a three week day sessions of four hours each right so here focus is to go over each and every service of the iso 14229 and try to understand the complete depth of service request and response right and then we will try to do a hands-on session of the same using the kano and the capital scripting so let us get into the course outline So if you look at the the uds part so the focus is to cover the iso 14229 the diagnostics and the communication management services so we we differentiate these services into 
uh, different kind of a groups. One is the data transmission, one is the stored data transmission. And then we talk about the diagnostic fault codes and the remote activation of different routines, IO control services, upload and download services, which are specially responsible for flashing the ECU, uh, which is a software update. And when then we will try to compare a UDS with the KWP 2000 protocol and also maybe we can try to compare with the OBD protocol. So here the focus is to cover all the various services which are listed here and will also be doing the implementation of the some of the important services like maybe security access, diagnostic session control, right? Uh, we can do read data by identifier, write data by identifier, right? RDTC service, uh, reset service, right? So we will be implementing some of the very important services either on the C programming platform or on the capital programming right so that would be our key focus here and the other thing what we can actually try to implement is the can transport protocol so because the diagnostics runs on top of the can tp so we can also try to use the previously written uh, can tp implementation and try to bring in here and attach it and build the put put a diagnostic stack on top of it and um, yeah, we'll also get into the CanOE tool itself, where we'll try to understand uh, different send options. Uh, uh, how do we do the data logging? How do we do the offline analysis of a diagnostic data, which is already being recorded, right? How do we do the measurement analysis with filter, right? Having a different uh, blocks of the measurements of the data flows, right? How do we create a reply block, right? Every time you get a request, how do we reply back? Uh, back using the reply blocks right uh, we'll also try to understand what are the different uh, uh, signal server concepts right in the in the interaction layer right how can we make use of, make use of the can dbc file and the cdd file uh, when it comes to the uh, diagnostic part right then we will do a detailed study of uh, capital programming right uh, um, um, going through each and every aspect of the programming language starting from the capital keywords data types declaration right so this in it this it falls in line with the our c programming most of the topics can be kind of reused here it is almost stands similar to the c programming but we'll try to understand what is the difference how does the syntax looks right and how can we compile it using the capital browser and how can we reuse inside the canary so all of that topic is listed here and not go in deep but maybe you can pause the video and you can always take a look what are the different topics mentioned here all right so our ultimate goal is to uh, kind of create a different network emulation node emulation right and how can we do this uh, uh, capital application development right we will write some examples inside the capital we will see how the uh, periodic message transmission can be done how the event handling can be done right we'll try to understand that and we'll finally we'll be building a, a, a a product uh, or maybe a example using a capital uh, and maybe we can also interact it with the python using the the com server part of the uh, uh, kano tool right and we can create a graphical user interface and we can build i'll just show you an example we can build something like this which is a cluster which consumes uh, information from an engine right it can also consume the information from the clutch pedal brake pedal accelerator pedal so we'll be building something like this once we have the knowledge of can can tp the kano capital programming so we can build up uh, uh, the complete uh, um, a product kind of a, a look and feel uh, inside the kano um, panel designer okay let me get back to the next uh, topic in the schedule yeah so the next topic we will have is uh, um, the autosar so now all these topics becomes a prerequisite for the autosar so autosar is going to be complete 24 hours training right so in the autosar we will try to mainly look into the three stacks which is our DAG stack communication stack and mem stack so these are the pre predominant stack where our key focus will be given but that doesn't mean that we will not study other uh, models we will be studying definitely or uh, every module which has been signed in the autosar 4.4 
including the crypto stack including the wireless stack right and totally we will be spending 24 hours of time with two weekends 88 hours and weekdays for four hours and we'll try to complete this course by 19th of may right so it's closely one month of an uh, effort what we'll be sp uh, putting if you opt for all the courses right and um, yeah let us let us go into the autosar uh, content itself and try to understand how does that look right yeah so yeah if you come here you'll see uh, the autosar content right where we will try to understand from basics what is the overview all right what is the goal of the autosar why do we need this autosar layered architecture uh, what is the basics and the fundamentals of the auto war what from where the motivation has come to come up with the autosar as an architecture right and what are the different configuration classes right we'll try to understand a very high level architecture in terms of uh, com stack mem stack rte right communication manager so all of these topics we'll try to study it from the very high level to get a feel of how the entire architecture is placed and then we'll come into the methodology where how does the input description file looks like how does the system configuration file looks like what are the importance of these two files what is the issue configuration and how once once uh, one can extract this information or generate the software executables using this right we will try to see that we'll also do a a session on the runtime environment where we'll try to understand what is rte how it is related to virtual function bus right how this rte can be kind of generated using a rte generator what are the key features and how does the how does the the portability of rte works right so all of that we will try to understand then we'll get into the uh, the complete bsw which is the majority of the autosar right where we will go into each and every layer and each and every module right for example if you look at here service layer right in the system services we'll be going through all the modules which are listed on system services which could be com manager or bsw mode manager crypto service manager issue state manager right so your watchdog manager your synchronized time based manager so all those managers manager modules modules which are sitting in the system services we will be covering through that similarly diagnostics once you complete the diagnostic modules you'll be able to relate what is dm dt dlt what is this fim right so similarly memory services non volatile memory communication services here we cover all the can ethernet flex ray lin right and all the other common modules like a pdu router and debugging modules then we come to the issue abstraction layer again here in the abstraction it would be the interface which we'll be covering again for can ethernet flex lin you can see the interface and the trans receiver part what would be focused here and similarly for the memory it will the memory interface for the eprom and for the flash whichever memory we are going to use for the project and then we discuss about the complex driver why it is required what is the importance of it right and how you can write your own complex uh, device drivers and then we come to the mcal we'll try to understand uh, uh, what are the different drivers which are standardized by the autosar right here we'll again go through all the communication drivers all the io drivers right all the memory drivers all the microcontroller drivers so once we cover all the different drivers then we try to look and stitch all of this together and we call it as a stack right so we'll try to see the entire com stack in the picture right starting from the can driver till the pdu router how the message flow happens if it is a diagnostic message how the dm dt or the fm will react with that right how the dcm is split into dsp dst dsl and how they are going to interact with each other right similarly the mem stack how the non volatile information would be stored what is the uh, 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 the memory interface or the nvram managers role to play here right is what is the uh, redundant blocks how does the data are stored right so all of these three stacks will be studying in detail right once we complete the individual module and we'll also look at the peripherals and some safety and the security related features right and then we'll get into the davinci tool itself where we'll do a a very deep dive study of understanding from basic what is the sip what is the uh, arxml file how do we create a new project how do we 
create a like a this loadable and selectable options how do we do the pre compile support link time support right so all of these basics from scratch even before even starting the configuration right how can we do all of that then we start with the uh, importing the different ar xmls right and how do we configure the ports pins spi adc we'll not be leaving any modules we'll try to configure each and every module which is available right pwm dio dem can configuration bswm ecm right so all these different modules we'll try to cover and we'll try to build a a can stack or a mem stack or a dag stack and we'll try to generate a code using the dag davinci configurator right we'll also have a lot of demo and assignments right uh, where you can witness how it happens and then you can do it by yourself every individual participant will get an access to a uh, uh system where all the required tools will be present on that particular day of the training whichever is required it will be available for the participant then we'll again uh, as usual as we are doing for every module we will end the atosa session with the <clears throat> uh, uh a test followed by a, a hands-on uh, uh test right where we can evaluate again uh, um, uh what is the penetration level of information and if we feel any participant needs an additional support definitely we can do that so that completes the complete course outline right so if you look at the entire course it is around 80 hours of a course based on which topic you feel you you want to opt you can opt that and if you are someone who is gonna go for the entire uh, uh course which is of 80 hours you are going to get a 20 hours bonus live q and a support where we will be helping the participant with an additional question answer session once you learn all this topic and go back and try to apply definitely you will have a lot of doubt and we don't want to leave you alone there uh, uh, we will have this additional 20 hours uh, on the regular basis where all of you can all of us can meet and discuss what are the different challenges uh, you guys are facing and how do we resolve it or any of the topics which you have doubts maybe after rereading or going through it you are coming up with a new scenarios or the situations you don't know how to handle it right so we can discuss all of that and this is only available for the participant who opt for the entire 80 hours program and the october certification pro october certi certified professional right so this certification will be given for the only participant who offer the entire program and it is not the participation certification but it is the uh, certification which says that you have cleared all the uh, evaluation tests and all the practical tests right so our intention is here is not to just focus on completing the training but also to ensure that each and every participant who is attending this training gets the required knowledge and he is confident from the day one that he can go to the project and he can start contributing and if anybody who reaches that level and who clears all the all the tests and all the practicals he will be handed over this auto hours certified professional certificate right you can take a look at how the certificate looks like it's just a sample certificate and what are the technologies uh, you will be trained on so all of that is kind of listed here <clears throat> uh, coming to the cost part right uh, so if you take a look at here all the five programs what i had explained in detail here right so you can see the individual costs uh, it is listed here for can can tp can fd it is 10000 plus 18% of gst for lin flex ray automotive ethernet it is 10000 plus 18% of gst for diagnostics uds it is 4000 plus 18% of gst All right and kano plus capel that's going to be 10000 plus 18% of gst and for auto sir, it would be 15,000 plus 18 percent of GST. So, if you individually opt, this is the cost, and if you combine all the cost, it is going to be 49,000 plus 18 percent of GST. But for first batch, because this is our first batch, what we are doing for the certification, we have been doing a training individually as an open house training, but this is something which where we are launching this autoverse certified professional program where we are handing out this certification so you will be getting a discount if you go for the complete package so the discounted price you can see on screen here so this is this this price is only applicable for the first branch as a launch offer right so 
the price at which you get all these trainings the 80 hours training plus the 20 hours additional is only 35000 plus 18 percent of gst okay so training start date is 23rd of april 2022 and you can immediately go and block your seat right by paying 999 okay you can use this link and you can make your payment by blocking the 999 so one thing to note here is the individual batch one batch will only contain a 30 participant right so uh, please ensure that you block your uh, seat by paying a 999 so that you get the seat and another thing is we always give a, a priority to the people who take the entire course the package course if anybody uh, suppose just for an example if you have a more number of participants in the diagnostics the preference will be given to the ones who actually offer the entire package right and we are trying to keep the number uh, to a very optimum which is a 30 number 30 participants so that we can actually focus on uh, individual participants uh, uh, learning curve their uh, 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 we can understand where they are facing the difficulty so that we can help them to understand the topic better okay um uh, one more thing okay uh, maybe a lot of you may have a uh, question why the auto certification program uh, we should go for right so you may see a lot of various courses outside available in the market maybe that could be a, uh, available online where you can log in and you can listen to a session um, the difference what we are bringing in here is uh, a hands-on right which is uh, which is making us um, um, stand away from the crowd right where we are trying to do this 40 60 where 40 percent is theory and the 60 percent is the uh, practical for each of the topics what is listed here right and our focus is not just to complete the training as i said earlier uh, uh, the focus here would be to ensure that the complete knowledge transfer is happening and it is successful and people are learning and we are bridging that gap uh, in terms of uh, making you aware and upskill uh with respect to all the skill sets you have opted for and uh, ensure that uh, uh, you can actually start contributing to the project once you get on to the job <clears throat> yeah and we also have this uh assessment process uh, which happens at the end of every module as i mentioned so we continuously evaluate our participants and ensure that uh, their upskilling progress is happening as per the plan and if there are any deviations we don't want to wait till end of the program and we want to correct it uh, uh, immediately after completing the each modules because all the modules are interrelated we don't want to lose that link okay so yeah those are the some things which i wanted to point it out and again coming to the cost it is the very basic cost uh, uh comparing compared to something which is available outside without the hands-on right we have a hands-on and the individual licenses and the individual tools available for all the participants right uh, considering all of that this is something which is best value for money uh, uh what is available okay the people who are kind of very much aspirants where where who kind of want to get into the automotive industry who are kind of lingering around the automotive industry or who want to kind of uh, enhance their skill set and take uh, their professional skill, skill sets to a next level i think it's a great opportunity for all those uh, participants to uh, come and attend this training and uh, yeah definitely it will be a great value addition i would say uh, to anyone who want to kind of upskill um, uh, their competencies okay so please click on this link uh, which will take you to a payment and you can block your seat and we are going to start by 23rd april and uh, the rest of the payment once you pay 999 you can pay it before 20th april and we can start on 23rd april okay so that's about the the course outlined what all we'll be covering and what is the certification program and what is the schedule looks like and how you can opt for it and how you can block your seat okay then hope to see you on 23rd april and uh, we will start our one month journey journey of uh, learning this uh, all the topics thank you